A mother and son would be slain in their own home, and it would take nearly 21 years to catch their killer. Hello, true crimeers. This is the case of Monica and Dalton Rollins. Viewer discretion is advised. Real quick before we get started, of course, hello, my name is Mike. If you're new to the channel, I tell thrice true crime stories every single week. Not in a British accent. Don't know why I'm doing this. Stop it. All right. All right. I tell three true crime stories a week here on YouTube, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So please feel free to subscribe and uh, if you are into that kind of, you know, stuff, because you're weird like me and everyone else. So yeah, I also tell short form true crime stories over on TikTok. The link to both of my TikTok pages will be in the link tree in the description of this video below. And also it pops up at some point here in the beginning and at the end. So you can click it easily and go there and follow if you like. I tell stories there daily. Also in the link tree below, you're going to see my merch store. We ship all over the entire world. We sell like t-shirts and hoodies and stuff like that. And then lastly, if there is a case that you want me to cover, just send me an email, a quick little email with the name of the case, just where it happened and when it happened, if you know, and then uh, I will add that name to my list. My list has over 5,600 names on it. You can actually see the list if you want to. It's in the link tree as well. Scroll through it, search for the name. It's all alphabetical. And so if you don't see that name, then, then you can email me the name. But if you see it on there, then it's already there. So I'll cover it at some point. I pick my cases at random. Can't tell you when I'll do that one. It'll happen eventually. But anyway, let's get into the story of the day. I'm a part of the Happy Hands Club all the time for some reason. I don't know why. Who gets that reference? Okay. And you're so awkward, Mike. Just go. You got it. Boom. Let's start. Monica Faye Pritchett, she was born on February 16th, 1979. She was born and raised in Anniston, Alabama, and Alabama is basically where she lived her entire life. At some point down the road, Monica would marry a man named Jeremy Rollins, and the two of them would have two kids together. However, at the time of this story, Monica was divorced from her husband. But they had an arranged custody thing, and Jeremy would see the kids, you know, every other weekend or every weekend or something like that. Described as a good dad, Monica described as a really good mom. So she was raising her two kids, but she also worked a full-time job, like a lot of moms, of course. She had six-year-old Dalton and two-year-old Aaron, and they were the absolute light of her life. Her kids were just her entire world. I mean, they, they meant absolutely everything to her. Everything she did, working full-time, all of it was meant to make sure that they had uh, as good of a life as she could provide. Monica was just described as just a really easygoing, very kind of calm and chill person. Very, uh, she was lovely. She smiled a lot. She loved to laugh, loved joking around. You know, she loved to make her kids laugh by being silly. And by the way, I think at this point, Jeremy Rollins had already gotten remarried and he ended up having uh, twins with, you know, his, his wife. And Monica was in her third trimester of, uh, of another pregnancy. I don't know if I've missed it in all of the stories that I've read, but for some reason, I don't, I can't find out who the father was of, of her third child, you know, when she was pregnant with. So the last time that anyone saw Monica from her family, at least anyone saw Monica alive was on September 13th, 2002. They actually uh, gifted Dalton uh, a, uh, a foal, you know, a little horse named Mojave. And Dalton was, you know, riding the horse around and he had a great time. And then Monica's dad would leave their house at about 8.30 p.m. And he went back home with his wife. And that was the last time that anyone ever saw Monica or Dalton alive again. 23-year-old Monica was living in this trailer home, and this was located in Heflin, Alabama. And, you know, after a couple of days, no one had heard from her, no one had seen her, and people were kind of concerned because, you know, she was about ready to give birth. I mean, she was she was eight eight-ish months pregnant or so at the time. There so people were kind of concerned that, you know, what if something happened? So the family would go and check on her. On September 17th, 2002. The family would go to the trailer and they walked in and they uncovered an absolute nightmare. Monica and six-year-old Dalton were inside the trailer, just covered and sitting in their own blood. 
They had both been stabbed to death, both stabbed numerous times, and both were pronounced dead at the scene. The family, once they discovered this, obviously this was a humongous shock. This was just, you know, they went into panic mode and they couldn't find Aaron at first. He was the two-year-old boy and they would search the house and they finally found Aaron inside of a closet and he was unharmed. He was alive. And Monica's baby, based on what I have seen, was partially birthed due to, I guess, the shock that Monica's body went through. But the baby was also deceased. So in the end, you had three bodies in this trailer. Blood everywhere. And the investigation started immediately, but it didn't look like they had gotten very far at all. The local police there in Heflin seemed to keep kind of quiet about their investigation. They collected, you know, physical evidence as much as they could, but, and I, I think there was one thing that kind of stood out and there was like a cigarette butt that was found at the crime scene. But other than that, there just really wasn't much. There were really no witnesses who saw or heard anything. There were no cameras in the area. This is 2002 before everybody on whose everybody had cameras outside of their homes and on the streets and everything. And so they didn't have that. And her trailer was kind of in this sort of remote kind of location, not surrounded by a lot of other people. The first person they obviously look to, of course, is Jeremy Rollins, her ex-husband. And based on some of the articles I read, while the investigation was still pretty kind of quiet, they were able to very quickly rule out Jeremy as being responsible for these murders. You know, they may not have had the best marriage in the end, and they got a divorce, but they both essentially moved on. Jeremy was a great dad to the kids. He loved them. He never showed any indications that he would ever hurt the kids. And I, I believe through, like, alibis and witnesses and, and all of that, they were able to absolutely rule him out. Like, he could not have had anything to do with this murder, which created a problem because, you know, usually it's either the husband or the ex or an ex-lover of some kind who is typically the one responsible, but they didn't even have that this time. And so now they're like, what do we do now? Police did not really put out a lot of information in the news. They didn't really want to show many of their cards in terms of what they had because they wanted the killer eventually, if they were to catch them or interview someone, they wanted the killer to slip up, which is a common investigative kind of technique. And that way they would know for sure. So they kept a lot of things really close and they did not reveal much to the public. Years, years later, they would say that not only do they have potential DNA on that cigarette, but they also had like fingerprints and stuff around the house that didn't match, you know, Monica or the kids or Jeremy or anyone like that. And as far as everybody knew, the case went cold. There were no suspects. There were, there was nothing. And so you have this idea of this like boogeyman, right? This monster, this person who is capable of not only stabbing a pregnant woman, but also killing her unborn child in the process, but also stabbing a six-year-old boy repeatedly until he was dead. This was a monster. This was someone who was lurking in the community, as far as anyone knew. And so everyone's like panicking and locking their doors and making sure their windows are locked. And who is this person? Well, nobody would know that until about 21 years later. In July of 2023, police announced they have a suspect. His name was Holy Abana Cadavra. Sorry, that just took me a little by uh, surprise. Did you lose a bet, my guy, or? Did you lose a bet? No? Okay. Okay, well, it was uh, this beautifully painted cue ball. Uh, he, was the, he was it, he was the guy. His name is Lewis Landon Spivey. And when this happens in 2023, he was living in Florida. Just not in a house, but in a prison. Police say they reopened the case or got a cold case team to work on this in January of 2021. They would go through and they re-interviewed like 60 to 100 people. And they were able to take that cigarette butt that they had found uh, some kind of DNA profile on it 
way back in 2002, but the technology wasn't exactly there yet in order to pull that small sample and you know link it to someone. But now in 2023, obviously it's much, much more advanced. And so they were able to create a profile with a DNA and it came up with a prisoner in Florida. You know, this guy. Spivey was in a Florida prison for just unrelated charges and he was serving a 15 year sentence and he was towards the end of that sentence. So they go to Florida and they immediately serve him warrants basically as he's leaving prison stating we have your DNA uh, at, the, at the scene of this murder. And apparently, I guess Spivey was a previous ex-boyfriend of Monica's. I don't know if he was the father of the baby or again, I don't know who was the father of the baby. And maybe I'm just like really bad today or stupid or something. And I just didn't see it anywhere. Maybe, I don't know, I don't know. Watch, I bet you I'll find it after I do this video. But Spivey, once he was presented with this DNA evidence because the cigarette butt was found inside the house or right outside the house, he confessed. He said he did it. He, he was the one. He stabbed Monica and Dalton. And he was charged, I think, with two counts of murder. I do not believe they've charged him with the murder of the unborn child. But as of right now, I'm filming this in February of 2024. This kind of all came to be towards June and July of 2023. The legal system does not work that fast. And so from what I can tell, he is still awaiting either a trial or some kind of court appearance to either plead guilty, because I don't he confessed. That doesn't mean he's going to plead guilty, though. He could still go to trial. And so there is not a, a complete conclusion to this case, but rest assured, based on DNA evidence, and I have to imagine also fingerprint evidence, but I can't confirm that because they found fingerprints, they've got their guy. Lewis Layden Spivey is the man who murdered these two people a pregnant woman and a six-year-old child. And then a, a two or three-year-old little kid ran up into a closet to hide from this monster. And that's what he is. He's a monster. He is an evil, evil man. Hopefully this ends with him being in prison for the remainder of his natural life. If I ever come across updates of this, I will post like a YouTube short or something to TikTok or something like that to say, you know, what the outcome of his trial or his case is. But as of right now, in February of 2024, I don't have that answer. But at least the people of Heflin, Alabama, no longer have to worry about whoever this boogeyman was running around who had killed these two very innocent people. Obviously, and unfortunately, there are plenty more monsters out there in the world who are roaming around completely, you know, covered in, in shadows and darkness, and we don't know who they are. So it's not like the world is cleansed with this one arrest, but they at least know that this guy is, 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 is caught and he is going away. And so, hopefully very soon, Monica, Dalton, and Monica's unborn child will hopefully finally get the justice they very rightfully deserve. But that is it for this case. True crime, Aruni, Dooney, Dingleberry, Dongs. Dongs. What? Hey, what? No. Like I said at the beginning, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Give this video a like so more people see it. It gets pushed out into the universe. What have you. Follow me over on TikTok. Check out my merch store and all in the links in the link tree of this video below skis. I'm gay. I'm sorry. That's just what we do. Anyway. <laughs> Recommend a case to my email listed below. Just the name of the case, where it happened, when it happened, yada, 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 yada. Like I end every video, we're going to do something very daring. I'm going to summon some kind of monster into my office here. So ready? Here we go. You're not prepared for this. <gasps> Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice! Yeah! Somebody appeared, but it wasn't, it wasn't Beetlejuice. It was just a guy named Steve. He's just out fixing the pipes. That's, we didn't even need pipes fixed. I, I don't, there must've been a mix up. I don't even, 